Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're joined by Richard Ferguson from North Island Baptist Church. You're the worship director. Correct. As, so, of, as of uh, the first part of July, I became the, um, the, the worship leader there at church and thoroughly enjoying it. Oh, that's wonderful. That's what, you know, when I, when I was at art school, there was such intense pressure to, because I, I had no art background, and um, singing, I would just, if I was drawing and having trouble, singing would completely change Absolutely. my state of mind. There's something so magical, not just in the music, but actually singing. What, what are some of the selections that you all pull? Well, we do a, we do a blend there at the church. So one the way I kind of do it is I look to see what our pastor Charles Kessler yes. is preaching on that day. If there are hymns that, that meet that criteria, that's just talking about what he's preaching on, then I want to sing those types of hymns. Um, so I look at that, I look at the scripture he's doing, and all those types and of things. And that just reinforces the message, it, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. It just it just kind of mixes with it so well. Um, so we do that, and then also, we also do a blend of, but we also do the praise and worship music. So there's a lot of people that like the old hymns, and the old hymns are great. They're so you know, beautiful. They're, they're going to live in our minds forever. There always will be a hymn book. You know, they're very, very popular. There's also a lot of great praise music out there. Yes. If you listen to the radios now or you watch some of the his TVs. Radio. His, right. his radio. His yep. radio. Some of the things on... Um, uh, Sirius XM, there's a lot of great praise and worship contemporary, music. Contemporary, yeah. A little more contemporary. And it attracts a younger group. Mm. And some of the older hymns they may have not ever heard. Okay, so we're introducing those older hymns to them as well, but we're also attracting a younger crowd as on, on top of what we already have in order to be more engaged and involved in the worship. Absolutely. And there's something about that. When you really go back in the history, even of rock and roll, you know, you go back to some of the old blues singers and old blues writers, and that had such significance with where music is currently. No doubt. You know, no and to, doubt. Th those old hymns are just absolutely gorgeous. Do you have a favorite? Um, well, I, I like, I like uh, you know, like um, Victory in Jesus. You know, I, I love that type of song. And the, and the great thing about it is some of the older hymns, they also give a version that's a little bit more upbeat, a little more praise and worship type thing. You the arrangement? Do, the arrangement is a lot different, um, but it's similar in that the words are the same, but yeah. the arrangement is different. And it, uh, again, attracts a different, a different group than sure. the normal. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Now, are you, do you have a music background? Well, I've been singing in choir since I was five years old. Oh, wow. Um, did a lot of, my mom was really engaged in choirs, and I think it kind of just, got me involved in it. Sure. Um, it's very uh, uh, enjoyable for me, but it serves a purpose. I yeah. feel like I'm just delivering a message through through voice and not through necessarily preaching. I can't preach, but I can sing. Um, done a lot uh, with other churches. Um, we've been back in this area for about 12, 15 years. Um, so I've done, done a lot with other churches from places we've lived. Um, at 12 years of age, I sang with the Savannah Symphony. Oh, wow. Um, the lollipop concert at the Oglethorpe Mall. <laughs> so, um, but that was years ago, obviously, just you know, fifteen, twenty years ago. But what pray tell is the lollipop concert? They don't do it anymore. It was a spring concert, and they did it at the mall. They also filmed it on TV. Uh, I sang "I Dream of Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair." <laughs> and it just you know when it's in you, when the music is in you. There's just no. It's, it's, you can't take there. it out. It's you there. certainly can't. It's, it's there forever. You know. Yeah. You know. One one of the um, last night, my wife says, "You sound a little hoarse. You can be okay for tomorrow." I said, "I'm gonna be great." I said, "I've just been singing in the cook, in the truck all day. You know, driving to different places, and I just love listening to the radio or listening to CDs or whatever the case is. Download yeah. the music, whatever. It's just it's just part of it. yep. and it's wonderful having that as sort of your your background music for the day. No doubt. You know, just be, I, I find that I am just completely shifted. I'm shifted depending upon the music I'm listening to or if I'm in my head at all, just putting something on or just, and just vocalizing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, there's so much negative stuff going out there. You listen oh, to the news word. all the time yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. That just kind of takes your mind off of it. It does. And it just, it's just so much more relaxing. And it brings you back to your source. Yeah, and, it's time to, and if you're listening to praise and worship in the, in the vehicle too, it gives you an opportunity to worship. 
that you may not normally have been able to do. And you know what? I drive much better when I'm. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. I don't get I don't get as frustrated. <laughs> I definitely have more patience, you exactly. know, when I'm worshiping in the car. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, so now, what have you all been doing around COVID? Have you have you had to make adjustments? We have had to make adjustments. So we we wear a mask. Mm. Um, I don't wear a mask when I'm singing. The preacher doesn't wear a mask when he's preaching. We're far enough away we can do that. Right. Um, but all of our congregates they wear masks. All right, our ushers wear gloves. Um, so we, 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 we're doing a lot of things around that. We're also streaming now. So, we, yes. so, so we're streaming the, the service on, on Facebook. Um, Pastor Charles was telling about yep. us about that. So that's been, and, and we, we spoke right when it was sort of first happening. Exactly. And it has just, it has just blossomed. It has, it has. It's, and we're getting some good results from it. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is people may not watch it at that particular time. But they can But they're back. watching it later. They can watch it several times. If they miss something, they can go back and look at it again. If they want to hear a song and worship through that way, they can do that again. If they want to listen to a sermon, they can do that again. That's one of the, the greatest blessings of technology. I feel that when, when you hate it when somebody had missed a message, you know, you really missed a fantastic sermon today, you got it now. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Absolutely. So it's, 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 it's a great thing. Um, and we're seeing, you know, people coming back gradually yeah. when they're starting to feel more comfortable their with level it. of comfort right? yep yep starting to feel more comfortable with it so it's all good north island baptist church absolutely wonderful it's so good to meet you and spend nice. some time it's with a you. pleasure and thank you all so much for watching talk of the town i'm your host carrie Dillon, and we'll see you next time